So I think as GPs, we're really the first port of call for people with worries or concerns about their mental health, or if their families or friends are concerned, they might direct patients to come to see us. And we um, see a, a wide range of mental health issues in primary care. So from stress and um, burnout to um, anxiety and depression, and also the, the, the much more serious mental health issues like first presentations of schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. So we really can manage a wide range of mental health issues in primary care. I think um, never be afraid to come. I think taking that first step is often the most difficult element. It's a nerve wracking thing coming to talk about yourself um, and often very scary. But hopefully I think you'll find that the vast majority of GPs have the time and are approachable and calm. And it's an environment where hopefully you'll feel you can open up and talk easily. What we have got now are quite a lot of allied health professionals working with us, particularly with a mental health slant. So we have social prescribers which can, who can help direct people to things that improve their mental well-being. So they can help people join gyms and, and take part in physical activity. They can help people volunteer and be part of groups, all things that might improve your, your well-being. We also have mental health practitioners working within primary care now. So they're experienced mental health nurses who have much longer appointments than a traditional GP um, and have direct access to the secondary care mental health services so that we can ask, ask for help and advice much more clearly. In primary care, we can advise you on the things that might help. We can refer you for counselling and talking therapies. We can also, in some people and it's necessary, prescribe medication or treatment to help with things like anxiety or depression. I suppose the other thing to say is quite often mental health issues will present with physical symptoms. So you might feel your heart racing or you feel short of breath or you feel exhausted and think there's something physically wrong with you. And sometimes that's being driven by mental distress and emotional distress. So that's what we're here for, to kind of navigate that path and figure out what's going on and how best to support you. We are uh, a drop-in centre uh, for anybody with um, any kind of mental health condition who needs a bit of companionship and support and we're open uh, Mondays, uh, Thursdays and Fridays and uh, it's completely free. A lot of people here they don't they don't see a lot of people from day to day because of their condition. Some people it's a really brave thing to come out and be in public with other people. Other people are, mu are much more sort of gregarious and live a much more normal life but they're all mixed together and um, you know they really enjoy being here. I was very isolated I didn't have any friends or anything and I would say that it was eight bells that has helped me overcome my agoraphobia. People come here and they, they, they get such an uplift from the place if they have other friends who have similar mental health or different mental health issues. It's good that if you haven't seen many people, say over the weekend, it's good to come back and see friends. I moved home to be closer to them. They are my support network. They've taught me how to become a stronger person. They've taught me how to laugh, <laughs> you know, we have. We do have some days where you can be in stitches and you just, you know, you can laugh and laughter is good. Oh, we have all sorts of activities. Um, we have somebody who comes in and teaches art. We do yoga, I do sitting yoga, and bingo is on every day that it's open. Everybody loves the bingo. A lot of our members are, have trouble, you know, doing things online or understanding letters they get from authority and so on, and we provide advocacy on their behalf, you know, helping them filling in forms, making phone calls. That started off almost as a sideline of what we do, and now it's probably 50% of, of what we do as an organisation is the advocacy on people's behalf. Um, as well as providing the safe space and the drop-in. And people do take advantage of that and we encourage them to do so.
So Time to Talk is an independent local charity and we offer counselling and support to young people in the West Berkshire area. At Time to Talk we're passionate about helping young people and we believe in counselling as a really valuable intervention. Um, as a trained counsellor, um, I and many other people have known for a very long time the value of counselling. You know, there are young people who don't have anybody that they can really trust to talk to. And in fact, many of us wouldn't necessarily want to talk to our nearest and dearest about stuff that's very difficult. So having somebody who is separate to talk to, it's just, it's just massively beneficial. I believe in it from every angle. So young people can refer themselves. Often GPs and schools will advise or they'll recommend young people to see us. But whether they want counselling or whether they want to use a digital programme, they can go onto their website. They don't need to tell us what the issue is. They can do that in complete confidence and put that referral through to us. And then the counsellor will pick it up from there. So we have a young ambassador group at Time to Talk who are predominantly people who just feel really passionate about mental health. I think just talk about it with someone you feel comfortable with and then from there maybe you can decide whether you need more professional help or whether it's just a case of changing your daily lifestyle. So maybe saying to yourself, oh, you know what, if I did some more sport, then I might feel better about myself. I, off the back of my counselling, have become a young ambassador for Time to Talk um, and I think that really allows me to stay connected by just being involved. Um, I would argue that, you know, that's going to massively um, improve or support your mental health. Whether it's time to get help yourself or whether it's time to help somebody else, then you can contact us via our website and get involved in any way that's going to make you feel better. Food is the opening of a conversation. It starts growing trust and relationships. And that takes time because the people we look after are really untrusting. So a hot meal and a bit of company, even a touch on the hand, you know, when they're having a cup of tea, that's the opportunity for engagement. And that's then we can build those relationships. So food is the start of it. We've got four sessions a week, three are food provision and one is an outreach where we do eye tests. The community nurse comes, we fill out forms, help people with universal credit, PIP applications, getting them into pro properties, helping them with their licence agreement forms, all that sort of stuff. A lot of the people who might come to us don't have a lot of control over things in their lives. So it's not that, oh, I might go shopping and I can afford to, you know, they don't have, they can't necessarily make those choices. So a lot of it is this kind of stress stuff that even the rest of us find difficult. Um, and also they might not have the, um, the skills to know what they're meant to do. There are so many other things that we can um, do. The outreach is endless, really. You know, getting somebody close for an interview, there are charities out there, but we can support with that. A phone if they need it, a SIM card if they need it. But today, for instance, we had Judy came in. She spent all day cooking, getting the food ready. We've had donations from supermarkets come in that have had to be sorted. We have committed ourselves to the vulnerable in this community to help them, keep them fed, keep them cared for as best we can. There will always be people coming through that are vulnerable, that are finding themselves homeless. Some people are so so broken and so sad and they don't know where to go so we have to hold their hand and show them they've got hope and hope's important We're at West Barks Community Hospital where older person's mental health for Newbury is based but we also have a base at Wokingham Hospital and also at Hazelwood which is at Prospect Park in Reading. What we offer is mental health services for older adults 
anybody over the age of 75 years. We also run a memory clinic, and that's for adults of any age who are struggling with their memory or have concerns about their memory, and we offer them assessment. And then from that, we offer some post-diagnostic support in terms of carer support. Um, we also got speech and language therapists, occupational therapists, psych psychologists, who can offer some of that kind of social, psychosocial support. I will assess people that come through the clinic where the predominant symptoms might be speech and language symptoms. Um, so their memory difficulties may be mainly to do with communication rather than uh, forgetting processes. So they might you know, still be able to be driving, uh, looking after themselves, all their activities of daily living. But when it comes to communicating and conversation, they have real difficulties. Anybody that's, that is experiencing memory problems is going to be feeling really anxious and quite frightened about that. And our service is here to support people through that, through what could be a difficult diagnosis, but it could be that memory problems could be associated with physical health or it could be a mood element. And we want to be able to weed out what the problem is, but I would encourage anybody that's struggling with mood or memory to contact their GP and ask for a referral to our services. Because we're, we're here to help. We want people to come and help. That's, what we're here for. We are a recovery college based here in the central Newbury and we provide free of charge courses for anybody who'd like to improve their mental health and well-being. And what's different about our courses is that they're not just led by mental health professionals, but also people like me who've had lived experience of their own mental health challenges. So we run our Classburg classroom-based courses here in Broadway House in central Newbury, but we also run other courses in all sorts of other locations around West Berkshire. Our initial course called Welcome to Recovery, people have the opportunity to come here to do the five week course, which is two hours on a Tuesday or a Wednesday morning. We also do other courses here like self-esteem, um, self-compassion. We do our creativity courses here. What we want to do is people to look forward and to gain the skills and tools and techniques to look after their own mental health and wellbeing. Some of our courses are based out in the community. For instance, we do a Recovery Street, which is a photography course around town. We'll go down to our allotment this afternoon, I'll show you that. But we'll also go up to places like Snellsmore Common and uh, Thatcham Discovery Centre, where we do our wellbeing walking. And we do formal mindful walking, which is about being in the place and being observing what's around you. That time out is good for people to just reflect and be sociable or just have some quiet time. So we're really fortunate to be able to use the allotment one morning a week where we come down with students. We're growing some fruit and vegetables. We do a little cutting garden. We'll stop at times and have some uh, coffee and tea together. But this is actually a great opportunity to connect with other people who also might be struggling with their mental health and well-being. Recovery in mind, a lot of people feel like they found their tribe. People like them who get their challenges but positively want to move forward together. Eight Bells Community Strength was commissioned by West Berkshire Council to reduce loneliness and isolation across West Berkshire and help improve mental well-being. We have community navigators who are volunteers. We train them and what they do is they support um, people that are referred into the service to get to community activities. Um, currently we are supporting um, in partnership with the Corn Exchange an art for well-being um, activity. So not only do our community navigators take people to, act, to these activities, 
um, we helped her run them as well. So um, what I do as a coordinator is have a look at the people that have been referred to the service and look at our volunteers and try to match them with their likes so that they're a similar type of person and then they will um, take them out and about on a one-to-one -one basis with the aim of hoping that they will then meet a support network, make their own friends, build their confidence and enable them to go to places more on their own and not be so reliant on the community navigator. So as part of our outreach programme, we attend Educafe um, every week, which is hosted at the library. Um, we use Educafe as a drop-in for clients. They can come and have a chat to me. Um, and also for a meet-up with our community navigators to find out how they're getting on. In addition to that, we will also um, support any of West Berkshire's residents that pop in to the Edge Cafe. We will help signpost them to organisations where they need, might need some additional support. We'll also um, try and find activities for them to attend as well and just try to connect them with local activities and stuff that's going on in the library.